Hey guys, it's Beth, and today I have my card share for the fall papers that came out of my All Seasons 3 pad that I've been working on using up. And I actually did do a process video for these, and somehow when I was editing, a big chunk of the files became unusable, like it just wouldn't read them anymore. I don't know if somehow they got corrupt. So I lost a big portion of that process video. So I was like, all right, we'll just let that go for now. We'll, I'll do the share with you on this one. And then the, I'm going to be working on the Halloween cards later this week. So I will try again with that. Cause one good thing about this pad is that, you know, since I'm kind of finishing off each season individually, instead of like all together with the scraps at the very end, the card process is a little bit more manageable to video the, these fall ones, I think the total time was five, six hours. I'm not totally sure, but I know it was over the course of like five days that I worked on it. So the Halloween one should be a little bit less because I don't have as much of that paper left. But so I am working on a process video for you. It didn't work quite the way I'd hoped for this one, but that's okay. Um, lesson learned and I will get it right the next time. But so for the fall papers, I think when I started out, I had three full sheets of this pattern, three of this pattern. I only had scraps of this, scraps, scraps, and then three full sheets. So that's what nine full sheets plus a bunch of scraps of different sizes. And I ended up getting 65 cards. And I've talked about it before, but whenever I start a pad, when I'm like trying to use it up, kill it off. I have all these ideas, but when I sit down to actually get started, it's hard to know where to start. And so a lot of times I'll just pick something easy, something that I, even if it's not the most logical place to start, you know, something that I know how I want to use that paper that I can get cut down, whatever. So I started with this paper. It was just a bunch of border strips and I knew I had wanted to make some like note card style cards with it, just to kind of keep them simple. So I just started by going through and cutting these three sheets down to be a card mat. And so I did round two of the edges on these and then I added a sentiment on them. And it depends on like the ones that have the turkeys. I did Happy Thanksgiving. And then there's some that just say fall on the border. And then I just added a little sentiment that says blessings and I did it underneath the fall. So it was almost like it was saying fall blessings. So like I said, I kind of kept these really simple. It was a good place to start. And the only other project I did with the fall paper were the hot cocoa packets that I showed you guys the other day. So it's just the hot cocoa packets and then the rest are all cards. So I've also talked about whenever I'm choosing my card sketches for the card making portion of my pad kills, I try to start with sketches that are gonna give me kind of the biggest bang for my buck that are going to use a good amount of paper fairly quickly. So I started with this CPS 217 because it used, you know, a, a good size rectangle of pattern paper here. And technically if I could have used pattern paper as my mat as well, but these patterns were all like very just big and bold. I didn't have anything subtle that would have made a good card mat. So I used cardstock for all my card mats. So. Here's the rectangle with the patterned paper in the middle and I did back it on some cream cardstock to help it stand out. And then these on all of these, I just used a brown cardstock mat. And then I have a sentiment strip. Most of the time it's down here at the bottom. Sometimes it's in the middle. Like I didn't want to cover up the little candy apples down there at the bottom. So I kind of put the sentiment in the middle on that one. But, and then for the three little circle elements in the sketch up here, I, on this one, I did three enamel dots. And then on these back here, I just did three little cardstock punched circles that kind of tied in that matched the yellowish in the pattern paper there. <clears throat> Next sketch is kind of following the same theme of trying to use up a bunch of paper with this rectangle in the center. And this is freshly made sketches number 226. And so again, I use cardstock as my mat and on some of them I use the, like this light gold color and then the other ones I used brown. And so if I use gold 
on my card mat, then I used brown to mat my pattern paper, and then vice versa as well. And then my strip across the top here is the same as whatever I matted the pattern paper with. And then for the circle or the butterfly element that they had, on this one, I there was uh, some of that border strip paper scraps that I had left that had some leaves on them, and so I fussy cut those out and just grouped those together. And that's what I used on the first few. And then on these, just kind of layered up some punches or die cuts that I had. Like this is just a one inch scallop circle. And then the acorn was cut from my silhouette. And there were two of those. And then this is the same thing just with like an oak leaf that was cut from my silhouette. Following that same theme, got a big old rectangle of pattern paper here on the sketch. And this is my favorite thing, sketch number 167. And this one at least mixed it, I liked it because it mixed it up a little bit and had the sentiment going, you know, diagonally across the card up here. So I did not mat the pattern paper on this one. And my card mat is just shades of orange. And then the mat for my sentiment here is also done in different shades of orange, kind of based on the scraps that I had available. The Happy Thanksgiving sentiment, I actually typed up in my silhouette and then printed it. I wanted, because I needed something big enough that was gonna go across my card. And then I pulled some brads from my stash, these little bronze brads. I added those just to kind of give the Thanksgiving sentiment a little bit of something extra. So I like how those came out. And then I did switch it up with this next sketch. It's Sweet Sunday, sketch number 178. And I mixed it up using a circle instead of a rectangle. Now, for most pads, the it may have like different colors and different patterns and styles of paper in the pad but all the colors tend to like work together normally this pad was a little weird because well at least within this fall like it had there's this pattern which i like it's a cool pattern but it didn't i didn't feel it went very well with the rest of the patterns because all the other paper was like these colors with a cream background and you know they all coordinated really well and then there was just that pattern that didn't seem to coordinate with anything and so most of my other cards are done on a cream card base but i didn't like the way this pattern looked so much with the cream i don't know again just one of those quirky things with myself i guess but so i tried to i used most of these kind of on their own with just cardstock and on these particular you know i used white card bases instead of cream so for this circle, it's like a four inch circle, I think, that I just cut with my big shot. And then like the sketch, I overlapped it here on the edge and trimmed it off. And then just did a simple hello stamp down here for my sentiment and managed to make like 12 of those. And then to use up the rest of that paper, I pulled out Operation Write Home sketch number 32. And I was trying to bring in a different color. One, to mix it up, and two, just to find something that went with that pattern. And so I pulled out a turquoise cardstock and ran it through my Big Shot with a polka dot embossing folder. And then I just have like a brown strip that goes behind my big rectangle here. And then my pattern paper's matted on white cardstock. So when I put these together, like I really liked the combination. It was like bright, it was fun. But for some reason now that it's been a while, like looking back, like I don't necessarily love the combination as much as I did when I put it together. So I don't know if that's what you call crafter's remorse or again, just maybe a quirky thing with myself. So I don't know if you guys have ever done that where you've made a card and it felt good and right at the time. But then when you came back and looked at it a few days later, you kind of questioned why you did it that way. Or is that just me? And I don't know, maybe it's because I added this leaf on here and I don't, that maybe that changed the dynamic of the card. But this happy fall leaf, I actually had a bunch left from when I did some fall cards last summer. 
and it's just print and cut for my silhouette and I was trying to use those up and I think that may have actually changed the look of the card for me but I still think they're okay I just looking back I don't love the combination of colors as much as I did when I made the card So this is Mojo Monday sketch number 361 and I chose this one because I had a couple big squares of pattern paper left and then I had like this was a strip a longer strip that I just cut in half and it made the squares so I didn't have to do a whole lot of trimming I just rounded the edges and then on this one I left off a colored cardstock card mat because you weren't going to be able to see much of the color anyway behind all of the the big pattern paper pieces and so I just left it with a cream card base but then I did come in and take some ink and ink up all the edges of all the different elements just to kind of help it pop off that cream card base a little bit so this turkey is, I used the inside of it I cut it from my silhouette last year and used the inside of it and so this is what was left so I just decided to use it here because the brown tied in well on the lettering on that pattern paper and then just have a simple blessings sentiment down here in the corner and this is the same except for on this one I used the hello fall sentiment that I had printed from my silhouette to use on my hot cocoa packets this is operation right home sketch number 90 And I had three of these little border strip pieces left and I thought they were pretty it was a nice pop of red and then I had some almost square scraps of this pattern paper left and they happened to be kind of close to each other on the table and I realized that they were almost the same size so I think I just trimmed a little bit off of this border strip piece and so like kind of again you work with sketches enough and some of them stick in your head and when you see the paper together sometimes you're like oh that would be a great way to use those would be great to use with sketch blah 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 so I pulled that sketch out and I just turned the orientation from vertical to horizontal for this card and then I laid my pieces on the card just so I could kind of get an even border around it you know the my card base behind it and then I inked up the edges just so it's going to stand out from the cream card base and then I had a gap here in between the two pattern pieces and so I just covered that like this one has the strip that goes across that is covering my gap between the papers and then I just have some die cut leaves that I actually cut from my silhouette and then that simple blessing sentiment and I use that that sentiment a lot because I feel like it could be used just for general fall you know blessings general like fall sentiment um, it could be a thank you card or it could also have like a Thanksgiving meaning as well this is Mojo Monday sketch number 383 and this one I used because I was trying to use up a bunch of like random scraps so I inked everything on this one again because I had done the last few cards and had the ink kind of still in front of me so I did ink up all the different pieces and on this one I have like an orange cardstock card base and with all my different elements and the ink just kind of helped it flow together a little better too and this card totally gives me a 70s vibe like with the orange brown and that yellow and the big flower it reminds me of my parents kitchen from the 1970s we had a lot of orange and gold and brown and mushrooms those were the patterns in my parents kitchen this is my favorite thing sketch number 114 and again with this one I was trying to use up some random scrap pieces that I had and looking back like I probably should have inked the edges of all these pieces and that probably would have helped it flow a little bit better as well but I think they still look okay so on this one I just used a stitched circle die and then I had a bunch of these strips left so I just kind of cut some fishtails in those and then I just used whatever I had a bunch of little sentiments left in my pre-stamped stash and so I was trying to use some of those up so this sentiment kind of changes and then I have some yellow enamel dots down here at the bottom so like this one's blessings that one's hello and that one's blessings and this one um, 
I did back my orange leaf paper here on some brown because I was trying to separate it from the orange that was in my strip here. And then this one also just has the yellow dots. And then we have my signature sketch, Operation Right Home, sketch number 154 that I use all the time. And I had a, several of these strips left that I was trying to use. And then of this pattern paper, I had some that were squares that I cut down and then some were strips. So when I cut down the squares, I tried to keep those together. And then when I put them on my, my, my brown square here, I actually put them like how they were laid out before I cut them out so that the pattern kind of flows. So I have three of those. And then here is where I was just using the strips that I cut down. And so these are all random squares. And this one down here, I just used a little strip of my pattern paper scraps that I had left. And then on the other ones, I have like some little brown cardstock circle punches that I had left from earlier. And then this one, I was like one square away from having an even number of squares. So I just kind of made my own. I took some of that yellowish gold uh, cardstock and then just stamped a pumpkin. And I may come back and color him at some point, but. And these, I didn't put a sentiment. Again, I just left it kind of as a blank note card that could be used for any type of message for the fall. I found myself doing that a lot on these, but so here is just a random card that I was trying to use up some of my scraps, my strips that I had left. And so normally when I do this, you've seen me do this almost in every pad kill, but I just group the scraps together on a piece of cardstock, leaving a little bit of space in between. And a lot of times I'll put it in the middle and make that, you know, like a middle focal point. So this one, I switched it up just a little bit and then put it off to the left. And then I have my thing, happy Thanksgiving sentiment here kind of coming off the edge and overlapping onto the card mat. And then this one, I just kind of offset all the scraps, kind of staggered them and then had another one of those hello fall pumpkin sentiments left. So 65 cards and that's just from the fall paper. So one season down, well, like 16 more to go. <laughs> it feels so. If you have any questions on any of the cards or any of the sketches, please let me know. As usual, I will leave all the sketch numbers in the description box below, along with the link to my Pinterest card sketches board that has all of these sketches and tons more. And then, like I said, I am working, I will work on my Halloween card process video for you guys this week. Like I said, I'm kind of working this pad by I'm finishing off this pad by season, but there's other projects that I'm doing. Like if it covers more than one season, you know, in that particular type of project, I will do all the seasons together, kind of like the hot cocoa packets. There's some of those, some other ones like that, where I'm kind of working all the seasons together for that particular project, but then I'm still going to finish off each season scraps on their own. So if you haven't already, please do subscribe because there is tons more to come from this particular pad series. And then I have tons more pads to use so you can stay with me and hopefully get some more ideas on how to use up some of that paper in your stash. And I have heard from so many of you that you guys are rocking your stash, using up so much of your paper. And that just makes my day. I'm so happy to hear that. Um, thank you guys for sharing that with me. And I thank you guys so much for your time today, and I hope you have a crafty day.